We're, we didn't even watch this video. And I already have PTSD about this. Let's just watch it. Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, Dinosuchus. A prehistoric creature called Dinosuchus ruled the world 75 million years ago. I don't think it ruled the world. It was just found in North America. But to be fair, you're kind of correct in this time frame because Dinosuchus lived 82 to 73 million years ago. This mighty creature was just as long as the T-Rex. Apart from the text I made, what was that T-Rex's sound? Was that some sort of man burping or something? But it was twice as heavy. I can assure you that not even the largest fragmentary remains of Dinosuchus Rio Grandensis is twice as big as the T-Rex. And it was likely more intelligent, considering the T-Rex had a tiny brain. T-Rex's brain was massive compared to other dinosaurs. This is probably the stupidest claim I've ever heard of. The formidable carnivore lived in the coastal quagmires and swampy areas of North America. It wasn't a dinosaur, though, and it wasn't a crocodile either. Dinosuchus was a prehistoric alligator. Alligatoroid. It isn't an alligator. It could grow 30 feet long, and it weighed around 7 tons. It really depends on the species, but I don't think a 9.1 meter long Dinosuchus... Uh, this picture is wrong anyways. Would have a mass of around 7 tons. That's just disproportionate. It was about as heavy as an elephant, and it also happened to be the largest predator in its ecosystem that we know about. Dinosuchus hunted dinosaurs for sport, snapping its jaws on duckbills and horned dinosaurs, or really anything that found its way into its marshy domain. The first fossils of this creature were found in Montana in 1909 by William Jacob Holland. You mean it's described in 1909. It's actually first discovered in 1858. But only a few bones were uncovered, so there wasn't enough to paint a definitive picture of what like. We now know there were three different species of Dinosuchus, and each one was more terrifying than the last. What this meant for dinosaurs of prehistoric North America was that swamps were a bad place to go. Herbivores and smaller, more defenseless dinosaurs would have been easy pickings in the humid and wet realm of Dinosuchus. Also, herbivores aren't defenseless. Small animals, they aren't defenseless either. You, you said more defenseless. I mean, fair enough for you. And while it likely didn't hunt carnivorous dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus rex, it's tough to say who would have won in a battle if it came down to a toothy fight. Spoiler alert, it's the Dinosuchus. Who do you think would win? Let me know in the comments below. And now for number 9, but first, number 9, the killer tadpole. Scientists recently revealed a killer tadpole that terrorized the planet long before the age of the dinosaurs. This video is called the biggest enemies of the dinosaurs. You're already admitting that it's clickbait. Well, at least to some extent. Scientists pieced together the discovered fragments of an ancient skull to reconstruct the face of a monstrous creature that lived 330 million years ago. Which is an acceptable estimate of 345 to 329 million years ago. It was like a bizarre mix between a crocodile and an oversized tadpole. The extinct species is named Crassigyrinus scoticus and scientists have known about its existence for about a decade. You know what I mean by the text? The uh, Crassy Gyrinus was described in 1929, the genus. The species Scoticus was described in 1926. If you said scientists knew it for a decade, it means that Crassy Gyrinus was known in since 2013, which is way too close to present day. However, the primordial carnivore doesn't have many fossils in the record. The few fossils that have been found are in poor condition, making it tough to learn more about the animal's appearance. But by using computed tomography scans and 3D visualization technology, researchers were able to create a working picture of the beast. We now know that C. scoticus was a tetrapod, meaning it walked on four limbs. It was also related to the first animals that moved out of the ocean and onto land. Its earlier ancestors would have had four flippers instead of legs, but it wasn't entirely a land animal either. 
It could still swim and favored a life in the swamps and wetlands of Scotland. The killer tadpole only grew to be about 10 feet long. It's around two meters long. That might not seem like much, but Laura Poro from Developmental Biology at University College London says it was huge for its time. Laura also says it would have behaved just like modern-day crocodiles. Because its limbs were almost virtually useless, it would probably be almost completely aquatic, unlike crocodiles. It likely lurked in the swamp just below the surface before ambushing its prey. Number 8. The Prehistoric Badger There was once a prehistoric badger on the planet that used to eat dinosaurs for breakfast. Yep, you heard that right. Paleontologists recently dug up some new specimens of the mammal from prehistoric China. The creature was so big and so vicious, it likely had a diet consisting primarily of young dinosaurs. It's called Repinomammus giganticus, and it was the size of a large dog. It measured over three feet long, and it was absolutely ferocious. Yao Ming Hu from the American Museum of Natural History says it looked a lot like the badgers of today only it was as big as the meanest German Shepherd you've ever seen. And it lived 130 million years ago in northern China. The newly discovered fossil has impressed researchers because the skull is double the size of its closest relative, Repinomammus robustus. The sheer size of this creature's skull shocked researchers. It's totally changing the accepted idea of mammals during the Mesozoic era. Up until recently, Scientists believed mammals were small during the age of the dinosaurs. But what we have here is something like a prehistoric wolf that was big enough to eat dinosaurs. Not a good comparison at all, if I gotta be honest. It obviously wasn't going to eat a titanosaur, but baby dinos were certainly on the menu. Our Giganticus's jaw length was about equal to that of a fox, but the way it devoured its prey was brutal. The articulation of the bones suggests that the prehistoric badger preferred to dismember its victims rather than killing them on the spot. It was likely able to rip apart its prey limb from limb, swallowing huge chunks of meat. So this cruel badger literally ate its victims, one arm at a time. Number 7. Critoxyrhina One of the most famous prehistoric sharks is Critoxyrhina. The first fossils of this creature were discovered in 1843. It was actually first discovered in 1822, but was re-examined in 1843. By Swiss scientist Louis Agassiz. It's pronounced Louis Agassiz. Then, 50 years later, another set of bones was discovered in Kansas by paleontologist Charles H. Sternberg. Scientists have found hundreds of teeth, a piece of a spinal column, and enough remains that we have an excellent idea of how the prehistoric shark behaved. We know Critoxyrhina could hold its own against the most fearsome marine predators of the ancient world. It was roughly 25 feet long and weighed between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds. It actually has a mass of almost 5 tons instead of the not even 1 ton estimate that you have. Also, minor mistake, but Critoxyrhina is 26 feet long, 25 feet long is not 8 meters, 26 feet long is 8 meters. And marine monsters like pliosaurs and mosasaurs likely would have steered clear of Cretoxorhina. And those were animals that could easily eat any dinosaur silly enough to step foot in the ocean. Cretoxorhina lived during the Cretaceous period, between 100 and 80 million years ago. It wouldn't have been easy for the prehistoric shark to hunt land dinosaurs, seeing as it couldn't survive out of the water. But it did feast on marine reptiles. One particular specimen was recently discovered with the undigested remains of Zephactinus, a huge prehistoric fish, in its guts. This just goes to show how formidable the shark really was. Scientists believe it also preyed on bigger marine reptiles like Tylosaurus. It depends on the species of the Tylosaurus itself. Some Tylosaurs were incredibly small compared to the largest Tylosaur. So, to put things simply, Cretoxyrhina was a killer of water dinosaurs. So your logic is that marine reptiles equals water dinosaurs. Okay then. So, for a shark you've probably never heard of, it was quite a fearsome beast. What's your favorite shark? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe while you're at it! Number 6. Dino Worms 
If there was one true enemy of the dinosaurs, it was most likely pests. Bugs and worms were far more damaging to dinosaurs than mammals, sharks, or crocodiles. Parasites in particular were a huge issue for carnivores. In 2006, scientists found evidence of intestinal parasites in a piece of dinosaur dung from the early Cretaceous. Fossilized dung is known as a coprolite, and this one was found in Belgium at the bottom of a coal shaft. It was the same coal shaft where paleontologists found 30 iguanodon skeletons in the 19th century. Inside the coprolite were traces of helminth worms. These are parasites that are very similar to ones that infect animals today. It looks like parasites haven't changed much in the past 125 million years. But it's still not clear how worms affected dinosaurs. Could one of these prehistoric beasts have gotten a tapeworm that grew to be 200 feet long? Well, that's the question scientists are trying to answer. They discovered the skull of a tyrannosaur whose lower jaw was perforated with holes. The holes were inconsistent to what you'd expect to see from a bite. It didn't look like they were made during a fight with another dinosaur. Would T-Rexes fight like that? I'm honestly not sure. Instead, the scientists argued the holes were made by microorganisms. Try to picture worms eating a rotten apple. Only these worms were eating a tyrannosaur's jaws instead. We still don't know the full truth about dinosaurs and worms, but the evidence does suggest even the fiercest carnivore suffered from nasty parasitic infections. Number 5. Tanistrophius. Of course, the Tanistrophius probably has a lifestyle similar close to water. So I'm not exactly sure if it would be an enemy of some, some reptiles that are ancestors of the dinosaurs. When Tanistrophius was discovered in the early 1800s, it was mistaken for a flying reptile because its skeleton was so bizarre. Paleontologists didn't know what to think of the monster, but it had an extraordinarily long neck that would put a giraffe to shame. Its remains have been found in Europe, China, and the Middle East, and it lived during the Triassic period, roughly 240 million years ago. However, it wasn't a flying reptile. Tanistrophius was an aquatic reptile. However, even though I said that it had a reliance on water, Recent studies have mainly supported that the Tanistrophius was equally capable in land and water. Yeah, the lifestyle of this animal is still in debate. Whose neck was twice as long as its body. The aquatic monster likely lurked around on the shoreline, waiting at the bottom of the water so it could easily surprise its prey. With its long neck, it was able to hide its body in the sand with its neck stuck up vertically and its head near the surface where it could easily snag some food. Inside the creature's guts, paleontologists have found scales and squid hooks. According to researchers, Tanistrophius was likely a piscivore, meaning it only fed on fish, and of course squid. It was alive during the earliest stages of dinosaur evolution. Dinosaurs began to evolve about 245 million years ago. Why are you showing this footage then of fully evolved brachiosaurs? Also, the 245 million years ago, it's a debate. Oh, so there was definitely some overlap. It's unlikely that Tanistrophius feasted on any dinosaurs, but it was still a scary creature that guarded the coastlines and ate whatever fish and squid it could. Number 4. Hungry Crocodiliform Researchers believe they have just found evidence of an ancient crocodile species that had a hankering for dinosaur meat. The animal wasn't a crocodile at all, but rather a crocodiliform, an extinct species that lived during the Mesozoic era. So, do you think the crocodiliform is a species? Okay, to be fair, you probably, you probably wasn't, you probably weren't thinking like that, but still, it's just absolutely bonkers. Just clarify it next time. They were very similar to crocodiles, but they also had some major differences. Most were carnivores, but a handful of them were herbivores. Some were even what we call durophagores, meaning they primarily ate hard-shelled animals. But there was one member of the crocodiliform family that had a diet rarer than the rest. It was called Ogersuchus, and it may have sustained itself on a strict diet of dinosaurs. I feel like it doesn't just have a strict diet of dinosaurs. 
How about the other small animals that came to its way once when the Ogresukis is was hungry? Researchers have always known there were crocodiliforms big enough to be enemies to the dinosaurs, but they never had any concrete proof that it happened. Now, after all these years of speculation, scientists finally found evidence in the Winton Formation in Australia. Really? The Ogresukis wasn't found in the Winton Formation because the Winton Formation literally took place in a completely different time from Ogresukis. What you meant is the Tremp Formation in Spain. They discovered the partial remains of an ornithopod inside the preserved stomach of a crocodiliform. Did you mean a small titanosaur? This has been huge because it offers the first physical proof that crocodiliforms couldn't get enough of that sweet dinosaur meat. But it looks like the prehistoric croc died shortly after its meal. The dinosaur in its belly didn't have enough time to be dissolved by the creature's stomach acids. The crocodiliform has since been named Confractosuchus sauroctonus. That's as good as it's gonna get. Since when are we talking about Confractosuchus sauroctonus? You should have talked about it. We should have mentioned its name earlier so that I can determine these information as correct. Which means a broken dinosaur eater in English. This monster was about seven feet long and may have been a juvenile, likely still growing when it died on its last dinosaur. Number three, Eoconstrictor. The problem is that Eoconstrictor lived after non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. Snakes are notoriously difficult to find in the fossil record. There is almost no evidence of a snake that lived during the days of the dinosaurs. There were definitely snakes after the asteroid that killed the dinos, but even snakes that lived a few million years ago have left almost nothing behind for scientists to find. Titanoboa, believed to be the biggest snake that ever existed, is only known because of some random vertebrae discovered in a Colombian coal mine. Based on the fossils in the coal mine, we know Titanoboa was truly giant. Estimates place the snake at 47 feet long, which is the accepted upper estimate. And it supposedly weighed 2,500 pounds. Joke's on you, the Titanoboa still didn't live with non-avian dinosaurs because the non-avian dinosaurs were already extinct. It lived during the Paleocene Epoch, likely between 60 and 58 million years ago and researchers think it only evolved in the years following the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs. After Titanoboa came the Eoconstrictor. It was very similar but lived sometime during the Eocene Epoch 56 to 33 million years ago. It wasn't that broad. Eoconstrictor lived around 48 to 33.9 million years ago. Even though it lived more recently than Titanoboa, only a handful of Eoconstrictor specimens have been found in Germany's Messel Pit. These snakes weren't all that big either, measuring no more than six feet. Titanoboa could have easily eaten a huge variety of dinosaurs. They likely wouldn't have fought the giants like Juganotosaurus, but most dinosaurs would have been easy prey. Because of the scarce fossils of snakes, it's possible there may have been other giant snakes that lived alongside dinosaurs. The problem is that the eel constrictor wouldn't have eaten so many dinosaurs like Titanoboa would because eel constrictor is simply too small. We just haven't found proof of them yet. Number two, the bird mimic. So the Ornithomimus, how do you justify being a big enemy of the dinosaurs? What, it's, is it secluded or something? from its ecosystem. Technically, Ornithomimus was a dinosaur, but to the naked eye, it was really a prehistoric ostrich. Ornithomimus means bird mimic, because these dinos looked way more like birds than what you would expect a dinosaur to look like. These were freakish bird-like beings that expanded during the late Cretaceous throughout Eurasia and North America. Ornithomimus had a small head, a fat torso, long legs, and dangling arms. Just imagine an ostrich with arms and you'll have a pretty good idea of what this thing looked like. But even with those floppy arms, it could run at a top speed of roughly 30 miles per hour. It was also the victim of some serious prejudice in the dinosaur kingdom. All physical evidence points to Ornithomimus being a plant eater. 
The reason it could run so fast is that it needed to escape tyrannosaurs and raptors that were trying to pluck out its feathers and eat it. The bird mimic is a little strange because it's not even an ancestor of modern birds. Our current birds descended from small feathered raptors, not from the dinosaur that physically looked like a bird. What do you think of this creature? Let me know in the comments. Number 1. The Dragon Wow. What a way to conclude the list. Dinosaurs had a great enemy in the sky. Pterosaurs weren't dinosaurs. They were more like prehistoric dragons. While dinos were busy stomping around on the land, and while crocodiliforms were ruling the swamps, dragons ruled the skies. In a recent shocking discovery, scientists found the remains of a pterodactyl with a wingspan about the size of an F-16 fighter jet. The pterodactyl that was discovered was killed in the prime of its life, and its fossils were found in a phosphate mine in northern Morocco. The massive beast, a flying nightmare by every definition, was 30 feet long and weighed 440 pounds. But how could a reptile grow so huge and still be able to fly? Scientists say it's because pterosaurs evolved lightweight skeletons. Their bones were reduced to nothing more than hollow tubes with walls about as thin as paper. Inside the Moroccan mines, a total of 200 specimens were recovered. There was the giant dragon the size of a fighter jet and six other species from three distinct families. Most pterosaurs likely hunted fish just like modern birds, but there may have been a few who were a little more interested in hunting small land dinosaurs. And since they were the only things of the sky, they didn't have much competition to worry about. Thanks for watching. This video just brings in so many questions. Some of them are so vague, I can't even determine if they're correct or not. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next one.